Hi, this is Philip Ador, founder of NCLEX RN 45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Hirschsprung disease. Hirschsprung disease is when a baby is born with intestines that can't move stool out of the body. This is because part of the intestines is missing its nerve cells called ganglion cells, which keeps the intestines from working normally. Hirschsprung disease is fairly common, affecting about 1 in 5,000, and is more common in boys than in girls. About 20% of cases occurs with families, so it may be a genetic. As the baby grows, ganglion cells migrate down the small intestines and colon. These ganglion cells trigger a series of contractions and expansions called peristalsis that help move food through the intestines. But the Hirschsprung disease, the ganglion cells don't migrate down all the way, leaving an area with, an, with any ganglion cells, which is called the agganglionic area. This has two effects. First, a ganglionic area and the anal canal are unable to relax. This means that they are much stronger than they should be and create a high amount of pressure. And second, the peristalsis in the healthy area overcomes the pressures to move stool out of the body. Usually, this only affects the lower end of the colon, but in rare cases, it can affect the whole colon, or in extreme cases, even the small intestines. After the baby is born, stool starts to build up and the stomach may become very large. The colon responds by, by becoming swollen and painful, which is called colitis. This leads to the following cycle. First, the ganglionic colon and the anal canal become blocked. Next, stool and gas build up, still allows bacteria to grow abnormal levels. This makes the colon flare up, known as the colitis, becoming painful and swollen and can't be absorbed much water and nutrients. This further weakens the healthy colon, which puts, the less, which puts less pressure on the anal canal which continues the cycle. Symptoms of the cycle include decreased peristalsis and a large abdomen, liquid stool, fever, dehydration, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and stunted growth. The first and most effective way to treat colitis is by colorectal irrigation, which clears the colons out with water. This breaks down the cycles and allows the baby to recover from the colitis before surgery. Even though irrigations can help manage colitis, Hirschsprung's disease is life-threatening if left untreated and must be fixed by surgery. The goal of the surgery is to unblock the colon and preserve the bowel control. This is done by removing the ganglionic area while protecting the anal canal. The first cut is made just beyond the affected area. This includes the rectosigmoids, the body's natural reservoir for stool. Without the reserva, bowel movements may be faster than they normally would be. Next, the second cut is made in the rectum, just above the anal canal. It is critical that this cut is made 2 cm above an area called the pectinate zone. If the cuts are made through this zone, it can damage the anal canal. This can result in fecal incontinence and child will not, will not be able to control their bowel movements. Since fecal incontinence is irreparable, irreversible, but most importantly, preventable, it is critical that surgeons protect the anal canal. After this cut, the ganglionic area is removed. Finally, the healthy intestines is connected to the rectum, restoring peristalsis. Even if the procedure is done correctly, 30% of the patients still have flare-ups of colitis. This is because the anal canal is still stronger than the healthy colons at first. Irrigations are still needed to stop stool from building up until the healthy colon gets strong enough to overcome the pressures of the anal canal. This can take months to even years and varies widely from the person to person, but severity and the frequency of colitis. And irrigation should be decreases as your child grows.